Good morning, Americans. This is your favorite alien uh, here on Friday, uh, June 18th, sitting in for Paul Harvey this morning. Stand by for commentary. Well, if Mr. Harvey were alive today, he would love this commentary. It's on climate change. And he would love the way that I'm presenting it today, too. So with further ado, here we go. Well, Americans, your president, Mr. Biden, is always telling about climate change. Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm. Sounds like Al Gore, doesn't he? Ah, <coughs> uh, yeah. And those Republicans are saying, oh, it's only a hoax. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. But you notice that he had a chance to really get something good with President Putin there and then go to President Xi of China because all three had their differences. They hate each other and they want to be top dog. The only problem is you share this planet and all three of you know you got a serious situation that's going to destroy this planet within the next 30, within the next three decades. So even if the Moshka destroys you, your planet's already been destroyed. In July 22nd, 2065, you're going to get destroyed by the Moshka. But hey, they don't have much to do. You already destroyed yourself. And not one of your so-called three top god dogs in the planet ever did anything about it. Case in point, last this week, President Biden and Mr. Putin had a Big time to do something about climate change because your atmosphere is being destroyed day after day. And there's nothing you're doing except lip service. What I would have done is say, okay, take 2% uh, of your defense budgets or $5 billion, whichever one is that, every year. Five billion dollars from the Russians, five billion dollars from the Americans, and five billion dollars from the Chinese. That's fifteen billion a year for ten years. That's a hundred and fifty billion dollars. And uh, the G20, they can provide at least eight hundred million dollars each country. So for the G19. Uh, or 17, or, you know, it's about the G20 anyway. And can you imagine with that? You would have almost, if the world provided everything, you would have almost $20 billion a year. $20 billion. And if businesses got together and invested, because it's going to help them. And you develop plants to clear the atmosphere of one, pathogens, and two, pollutants. That way you get rid of the COVID-19. You won't get rid of it 100%, but you'll put it down to zero as a yellow fever uh, to a certain extent if you do the mitigation. Okay? If you don't do mitigations for yellow fever, it'll come back. Case in point, and I'll give you a little history lesson, Americans. In 1865, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. And John Wilkes Booth jumped off the balcony onto the stage, broke his leg. Yeah, you know. And then you had the expression, your name is Mudd. Remember that? Samuel Mudd? Dr. Samuel Mudd, that is. A guy who you guys erroneously thought was part of the plot. All he did was a doctor trying to heal a guy. He didn't know that he had assassinated the President of the United States. And you threw him into a prison of Tortugas. And then he got reassigned to this fort. And the sanitation was terrible there. And the people were dying left and right. Even the doctor died of that fort. So it came to Dr. Mudd to save the day. 
and he realized that it was yellow fever. And if you haven't seen yellow fever, it's an awful thing. Your skin turns yellow and jaundice, and that's why it's called yellow fever. And believe me, it's painful, because where I come from, there is yellow fever. And boy, you don't want to get that. So he eliminated the mosquitoes. He didn't know what he was doing, but he did it correctly. Because 20 years after him, Walter Reed did it. He still didn't know what he was doing. And then William, Gor William Gorgas did it after him in the Panama Canal to finally mitigate the yellow fever, both in Panama and also in Florida, which was very prevalent in time. And this relates to your climate change, because right now, in the West, you guys are having water shortages and heavy heat. And this is because the Chinese have embarked on a extremely growing pains, as they call it, trying to get even with the Western powers. So they're doing in 20 or 30 years what it took you guys a century and a half to do. They're concreting to death their own territory. Too much concrete means too much heat, and it also affects the planet's mass. Speaking from an alien from another planet here, I can tell you that your planet's mass has been deviated in the last 35 years. About a degree, but that's enough to cost you heavy problems here in the United States and it's costing heavy problems in Russia because their permafrost is starting to uh, thaw. And now all that layer of ice that they had in the tundra over there, you're finding all kinds of stuff underneath that tundra. And you have found already bacteria that goes back 30,000, maybe a million years. Imagine if you find pathogens like COVID-19 ancestors who come back and say, oh, we got humans now, let's go get them. Yeah? So see what I mean? Your top dogs have to live on this planet, whether you're Americans, whether you're Russians, whether you're Chinese. Instead of trying to kill each other or imposing your will on each other, number one, you got to first get your planet back to safety. Will it be the same as it was? No. But make it still habitable for centuries to come. This is your favorite alien sitting in for... Mr. Paul Harvey this morning. And I hope somebody here in YouTube and Facebook gets this and starts pushing your congressman to adopt this kind of information. Good day.